Good morning, commissioners. Noel Kramers of the California Farm Bureau Federation. I wanted to take the opportunity to speak about mountain lions. I know you are not receiving the evaluation today, um, but it's an important issue to our members. Um, according to USDA, mountain lions are the number two predator of cattle and calves and the number th three predator for sheep and lambs in California. So they do um, have a significant impact on our livestock producers. Since 2001, according to the department's data, 3,500 depredation permits have been issued. So if mountain lions are listed under CESA, those producers in on the Central Coast and, and South Coast would no longer be able to get depredation permits to deal with problem mountain lions. This creates the, a management challenge not only for livestock producers, but also for the department. So for example, Kern County is proposed to be both within the ESU and outside of the ESU. And given mountain lions significant ranges, you could have mountain lions that reside in the ESU but leave the ESU and kill livestock. And so it's unclear how management would take place um, on the edges of the, those areas. Finally, I'd just like to remind the Commission that Section 4800D of the Fish and Game Code um, prohibits both the Commission and the Department from adopting regulations that are in conflict with the rest of the code sections dealing with mountain lions. That was put in place by the voters of California in 1990 with the passage of Prop 117. And so it's our belief that you don't have the authority to list mountain lions under CESA. So when that decision comes before you and it's appropriate, we urge you to reject the petition. Thank you. Good morning, President Scalar and Commissioners. I am Erica Sanko with the California Wool Growers Association. We represent all the sheep and goat producers throughout California. And I'm here to remind the Commission regarding item number six that we are opposed to the petition to list the mountain lion as threatened or endangered. We concur with the comments submitted today by California Farm Bureau Federation and prior comments submitted by both California Farm Bureau Federation and the California Cattlemen's Association. Mountain lions are the dominant predator for sheep and goats. According to the department data, and as Noel with California Farm Bureau already mentioned this morning, of the permits that have been issued by the department over the last three years, over half of them have been for incidents involving sheep and goats with problem mountain lions. We believe that Prop 117 gives our members the right for the department to issue a depredation permit to deal with a problem lion when their animals are either injured or killed by a mountain lion. By Liz, if the commission chooses to go ahead and accept the peti petition and list the mountain lion as threatened or endangered, our members will lose this right. We also believe this is another way of taking away a tool for managing predators from the toolbox, which continues to shrink for our producers in the state of California. There's very few tools available anymore for managing predators. As stated in our letter to the commission dated July 30th, we do not believe the commission has a legal standing to list the mountain lion as either threatened or endangered. And if the commission were to list the mountain lion as such, we believe that it will violate Prop 117. So for the sake of time, I will defer to our opposition letter and the comments and concerns stated in that letter to the commission. That again was dated on July 30th. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, President Scalar and members of the commission. My name is J.P. Rose, and I'm an attorney with the Center for Biological Diversity based in Los Angeles. As a land use attorney, I wanted to highlight a few points relevant to the mountain lion CESA petition. Short-sighted land use decisions continue to be a major threat to Southern California mountain lions. In Riverside County, the proposed 200-acre Altair development would degrade the last viable linkage between the Santa Ana Mountains and the Eastern Peninsula Ranges. The Santa Ana mountain lions are already hemmed in by existing development and the I-15 freeway, which has led to dramatic declines in genetic diversity. The genetic diversity of these lions is now nearly as low as the endangered Florida panther. The Altair development was nonetheless approved by the city of Temecula in December 2019. Prior to approval, DFW warned the city that the project would irreparably harm the Santa Ana mountain lions and conflict with the local habitat conservation plan. The Center, Mountain Lion Foundation, and other groups filed suit against the development in early 2017. On November 22nd of this year, the court tentatively ruled that the Altair Project's environmental re review did not properly analyze impacts to mountain lions 
nor demonstrate consistency with the Habitat Conservation Plan. However, this ruling is not yet final, and the City of Temecula could still attempt to reapprove the same project even after the final ruling. In LA County, officials also continue to approve large-scale development directly in line corridors. For instance, the 1,000-acre North Lake development was approved by the LA County Board of Supervisors in May 2019. Both DFW and the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy informed LA County that develop, the development would degrade movement for mountain lions between the Angeles and Los Padres National Forests. The county still decided to approve North Lake. CESA listing would give DFW a powerful tool to push for reasonable modifications to development proposals so that they can move forward in a manner that does not threaten struggling mountain lion populations. Another issue I'd like to briefly mention is vehicle strikes. Southern California and Central Coast mountain lions continue to needlessly die due to a lack of wildlife crossings on highways. In September 2019 alone, at least three mountain lions were reported to have died while crossing highways. These deaths are part of a larger trend. Around 100 mountain lions are killed by vehicle strikes in California each year. CESA listing would help, would help on this and give impetus to Caltrans to better ensure transportation projects incorporate wildlife crossings for mountain lions. In addition to benefiting mountain lions and other wildlife, wildlife crossings would protect people by reducing vehicle wildlife collisions. Thank you, President Scalar and members of the Commission for your close attention to these issues, and we look forward to the Department's evaluation and your forthcoming decisions on the petition. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Karina Domingo. I am a wildlife biologist and uh, the conservation specialist for the Mountain Lion Foundation. New research has been released that outlines a newly discovered threat to mountain lions. The research is so novel that the topic is actually not included in our petition to list southern and central coast mountain lions under the California Endangered Species Act. The study, conducted by researchers at UC Davis, found that mountain lions in coastal central California are exposed to mercury through marine fog. So how does it happen? Human activities have increased the circulation of mercury globally. Mercury is a byproduct of the combustion of coal, which makes its way into the atmosphere and deposits into the ocean. Powerful upwelling from the Aleutian Low churns water from the ocean depths, and mercury is transferred from the ocean into the marine layer, which is then taken up by lichen. Lichen is then consumed by deer, the primary prey of mountain lions. So methyl mercury makes its way from the ocean to terrestrial food webs into an apex predator. It sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, but unfortunately for mountain lions, it's reality. One lion analyzed in the study had a fur sample with high levels of mercury, and at the time, this puma was found with no apparent cause of death. It is unclear how the accumulation of mercury affects mountain lion reproduction, especially in populations with already low genetic diversity. It is also unclear how mercury may interact with other environmental toxicants, such as anticoagulant rodenticides, and more research is needed in order to further understand the potential synergistic effects of the two. The second paper I'd like to bring to your attention was published this October by Benson et al. The research looked at the survival of mountain lions in the Santa Monica Mountains and surrounding areas. And researchers found that the most significant human-caused mortalities for mountain lions in this region are fatalities associated with vehicle collisions and rodenticide poisoning. The authors clearly state, quote, given the potential for local extirpation of the Santa Monica mountain lions and other isolated populations in the Los Angeles area, efforts to reduce mortality from human causes as well as restoring landscape connectivity are critical for the persistence of this top predator in the human-dominated landscape of Southern California, end quote. We are confident that we can rely on the expertise of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife to carry out a thorough review of this petition and newly published research uh, in the next coming weeks. Thank you so much for your time. Once again, I'm still Dennis Fox. And um, this 
shows the problem with the Endangered Species Act that did not happen with the elk. And that is using the, using the Endangered Species Act or what's in people's minds about endangered species for something that does not have to do with wildlife. In this instance, management was taken away from the department. I was on uh, CalFed, and uh, we had a person from the University of California, Los Angeles, gave us a little talk on what happened with, as a result of, of the mountain lion. It ate off middle management. And when you got rid of middle management, then you started having problems. He said the first one was the building started tipping in because of the ground squirrels. Nothing's taking care of them. The second thing that happened was from the ground squirrels, we get hantavirus. And then we get plague, one of the benefits of the mountain lions. There has been a lot of money raised. It took from the department and diverted it elsewhere to uh, the platoon. I believe it was $28 million for 20 years. It was taken from wildlife and given to acquisition of land for the mountain lions, to the extent that now they need a woodsy overpass. So, uh, something to think of. It's, it's a lack of perspective. Some people, have, but, have, but it has raised money. And also it's eaten the deer, so you get rid of those. And, there are people that really, as H.L. Mencken said, cannot stand other people having a good time. Thank you.